Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Compares Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Phyrexia. All will be one. Oil. Leaking oil. Leaking cards. Uh, oh, <clears throat> sorry, that was fun. Anyways, <laughs> or annoying, one of the two. Anyways, apparently, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's just on theme with this upcoming set, but uh, Wizards is having... Uh, a little bit of leaking issues when it comes to uh, certain cards being leaked. Because, as I've said now multiple times, uh, spoiler season has not started yet for Phyrexia. All will be one. And although they did have some first looks the other day, uh, last week, I think like about a week ago. Um, yeah, uh, there really hasn't been uh, that much that's supposed to have come out. Uh, including some of the mechanics and stuff. But... Uh, again with these leaks, uh, yeah, uh, some things just keep happening, and here we are again! So yeah, actual spoiler season starts on January 17th, stay tuned to the channel for then, but uh, as for now, let's talk about uh, apparently this bundle image that was either leaked or released, but not realizing what size it was, and that it could just be, you know, uh, enlarged so you could actually see uh, what was going on. So yeah, this looks like one of those pictures that, uh, you know, is probably sent to distributors or whatnot to be like, Hey, yeah, uh, this is what you can expect from this. Cool, look at all this. And then the bottom right, you're like, Ah, oh, that's a tiny little car, but you really can't read what's on it. And then, uh, yeah, people on the internet are like, Wait, this is a giant image. Um, and hence, and hence, yep, there we are, cool. Uh, yeah, you can very clearly see, uh, what apparently the bundle, uh, promo card is for this. So, yeah, another spoiler that... <laughs> Probably is unintentional, uh, but yeah, here we are. So uh, let's just go to the mtg.design version of this. Actually, never mind. I just zoomed in on this one. Uh, anyways, call it mtg.design. You're awesome. But yeah, <laughs> sorry. I put together this episode quick. Again, it is a quick take. Trying to give you my thoughts on it quickly. Here we go. Karu Monix. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Anyways, the Rat King. A 3-3 Phyrexian rat that costs one black black and it has toxic one, now, if you haven't seen the Toxic Mechanic on some of the other leaked cards, this is kind of another confirmation. This is an actual mechanic. Uh, players deal dealt combat damage by this creature also get a poison counter. So, yeah, basically a fixed version of Infect. Because Infect is, well, again, just based on the amount of combat damage. And also gives away minus one minus one counters to creatures. So, much more powerful than this. But still, Poison is back. Poison! Bell Biv DeVoe. Anyways, other rats you control have Toxic 1. That's right, Toxic Rat Tribal. Poison Rat Tribal. What's not to love about that? Also on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You can reveal any number of rat cards from among them, put them in real cards in your hand. Put the rest of your library in random order. Um, this could potentially be a 3 mana. Again, which introduces the Toxic mechanic to all of your rats, and as Toxic itself, of course. Uh, that also gets you five cards off the top of your library, potentially. Again, if you've got all rats in the deck, and, you know, you don't hit any lands, you just hit rats. Cool! We get five cards for three mana. That's great. So, yeah. Um, this uh, obviously can provide you a ton of card advantage. It can be incredibly deadly. It can make your army incredibly deadly. And, yeah, it can make use out of everyone's favorite adorable creature type. Rats! Right? And, of course, there are different directions that you can take this deck. I mean, most are going to be rat tribal, but kind of within that... You can take it in very interesting, specific directions that you really can't take other tribes. And we'll talk about a few cards here in a bit. Now, as I am going through the this episode, I'm going to be breaking things down into the budget buys in the pricier picks. So, yeah, the cards are within my budget. The cards are slightly out of my budget. And the ones for you to consider picking up. If you're interested in any of these cards, please check out that link in the description below. And also, I probably should say first, though... I don't believe that this has actually been confirmed to be a real spoiler, so take all this with a grain of salt, though that being said, it does look incredibly legitimate, including, you know, all those other pictures that they bundled to, so yeah, it looks legit to me, but yeah, yeah, just be wary in case you are looking real around this commander, just know that it might not actually be a real card, though it probably is. Anyways, just I want to put that disclaimer first before I say, hey, go get these cards! Anyways, <laughs> budget buys, again, are going to be the cards that are less than $1 They're within my budget for the decks I build as well. So let's talk about those cards, starting off with, of course, rats. Typhoid rats, rants of rats, and a wave of rats. Typhoid rats is a 1-1 for just a single black mana, but it has death touch, so 
Giving a death touch, obviously, is a not a form of evasion, really, but uh, deterrence for blocking, essentially. Let's just say that. So yeah, a simple low-to-the-ground creature that now basically, again, has a way to give out poison counters, too, with our commander in play, because that toxic one. So yeah, swing an opponent. Hey, yeah, you want to lose that much more important creature than mine because you have to block this? Uh, or... You want a poison counter and yeah those poison counters can build up quite quickly only taking 10 to take an opponent out and yes that includes a game of commander as well so you might start off with 40 life but going down to 10 poison counters uh yeah that that can go pretty quick rain said rats say another one 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 skulk death touch so yeah this one actually can get through on a lot of players and yeah if i player might have to block they're gonna have to get rid of something anyways or lose something skulk creature can't be blocked except by creature or by creatures of greater power so it's gonna get underneath your opponent's big creatures or you can go over the top of them with wave of rats four to a trample when it dies but it dealt combat to a player this turn turn to the battlefield under its owner's control so yeah this can be a great one to just keep getting back again and again and again if you are getting it through with that trample damage and and yeah also with that trample damage getting that toxic one to apply as well Keep in mind, yes, Toxic 1 means that, yeah, you're only giving one poison counter no matter how much damage this does. So even if this just hits a player deals 4 damage, that's still just one poison counter. So keep that in mind. Next up, though, speaking of poison counters, uh, a way to give even more poison counters is with Septic Rats, which is a 2-2 that does have Infect. On top of that, whenever it attacks a defending player is poison, it gets plus plus 1 until end of turn. So if that player is poison, this becomes a 3-3 on attack. Let's just say it gets through on that player. That infect damage is going to be three, and I believe you'd also get that toxic one as well. But yeah, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong on that. Regardless, still a good consideration for the deck, obviously. Feign Death, another kind of card I want to bring up with this commander. Again, this commander can give you card advantage when it does enter the battlefield. So to protect your rats, including your most important one, your commander, Feign Death is a great effect, and there's a lot of these now. Basically, when this creature dies, bring it back. And yeah, with this one, also giving it a counter too. So cool, extra counter, be the most important thing. Very efficient way to bring your creature back. Crypt Rats, another kind of rat to consider. This one is not like a, kind of like a board wipe on a body. X, deal X damage each creature each player spend, only black mana on X. Yep, you're you know in a mono black deck, you're probably gonna have black mana, so cool. Take out the creatures that you need to take out. Moving on, we also have some more utility rats as well, like Burglar Rat, enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Drain your opponents of their resources, you know, just basically punish them for, you know, playing against your rat deck. Poison them, take them out, take out their cards. Speaking of that, Stronghold Rats, 2-1 with Shadow, so this one can only be blocked by creatures with Shadow. Only block creatures with Shadow too, but still that's fine. Basically unblockable, deals combat to a player, each player discards a card. Yes, this hits you as well on the card discard, but it's going to be worth it. So yeah, again, draining resources and getting through for those poison counters. Speaking of getting through... Dirge of Dread, Intimidation, and Archetype of Finality. The first one says all creatures gain fear until end of turn. So cool. They can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and are black creatures. So your creatures are basically unblockable unless your opponents have those kinds of creatures. Intimidation, very similar, but on an enchantment. So an effect that just sticks around. Basically, again, making your creatures unblockable against certain players for the most part. Archetype of Finality, creatures you control have death touch. Creature opponent control, lose death touch, you can have or gain death touch. Again, Death Touch is not a form of evasion, but it is a great way to deter your opponents from actually blocking your creatures, even though they basically are going to have to at a certain point because of that poison. And also a great way to block your opponent's creatures to well that Death Touch, a great deterrent from them actually attacking you too, so it works both ways. And uh, finally, we're going to talk about some proliferate cards that you're going to be talking about, <laughs> you're going to be talking, that you're going to be considering as well. Contagion Class, Throne of Geth. Contagion Class has enters battlefield, but I blind one last counter target creature, and we can also pay four and tempt to proliferate. So yeah, again, when we proliferate, we choose counters on things, we say, you get an extra counter, you get an extra counter, and that includes poison counters on opponents. So even if we just get one poison counter on an opponent, they are still not safe. Uh, and yeah, Throne of Geth can really help with that too. Tap, sacrifice, and artifact, proliferate. We can even utilize our mana rocks or throne of geth itself to actually finish opponents off, getting them more and more poison counters. But now that we've talked about the budget buys, let's talk about those pricier picks, those cards that are slightly out of my budget range, or much more so out of my budget range, again, of $8. So these cards are $1 or more cards for you to consider. And again, both the you know types of cards are going to be in that list in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Anyways, the first ones that came to my mind when I saw this commander, Rat Colony, Relentless Rats. Yeah, this is kind of those variations of this deck that I was talking about. Again, Rat Tribal, but a different kind of tribal deck that other tribes really can't do because 
Rat Colony says it's a 2-1 for just one in a black, and it gets plus one zero for each other rat you control, and a deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. So you can just do an entire Rat Colony deck around this commander, and be like, cool! I mean, I mean I've got like 10 Rat Colonies in play. Great, they're all, you know, uh, 12 ones. Swinging. Awesome. They're either going to take you out with damage, or eventually I take you out with poison counters as well. Relentless Rats, very similar. 2-2 two, two for one black black. Gets plus plus one for each other creature on the battlefield named Relentless Rats. A deck can have any number of cards named Relentless Rats. There's a slight difference between these two, obviously, but yeah, this one also pumps the toughness too, so they're going to be hardier in combat and harder to take out. And speaking of taking out, um, Maronar. Yeah, an incredible addition to this kind of a deck built around rats. All rats have fear. Great. Again, a way to get them through. On top of that, tap sacrifice a rat. Put X rats into play where X the number of rats you control. Basically, kind of like a doubling up of your rats in a way somewhat. I mean, you have to get rid of one first, but still. Yeah. Making your rats near unblockable and then also be able to get you more and more rats that are toxic. Great. Ashcoat of the Shadow Swarm. Another great addition. And this one I think is very expensive right now. Just came out in Jumpstart 2022. Whenever it attacks or blocks other rats you control, get plus X plus X plus one. X the number of rats you control. Um, yeah, again, you're going to have a rat travel deck. You're going to have a lot of rats in play. Beginning Ren Step, Mill 4, return two rat cards to your graveyard to your hand. Get them back. Do it again. Have fun. Take your opponents out. Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni is a great one to get through. Whenever deals counter to a player, you may put target creature card from that player's graveyard on the battlefield under control, and you can regenerate it. Yeah, this is a great way to get additional value out of your opponent's graveyards and use their own creatures against them. And um, speaking of using creatures against them, Pack Rat. Yeah, you can now discard cards, get to token copies of Pack Rat, and Pack Rat's power is going to be equal to the number of rats you control. Actually, sorry, power and toughness. So this can uh, become a menace quite quickly, and it was definitely a menace in standard way back when when I played. Regardless, Ico Rats, another Infect Rat to consider. 2 1, enters the battlefield, each player gets a poison counter. So just on ETB, we're giving up poison counters too. And then Zodiac Rat, a 1 1 with Swamp Walk. Yeah, that's basically it. Again, going to be unblockable against opponents that have a swamp. And yeah, chances are pretty high that at least one opponent is going to have one. Speaking of making your creatures unblockable or, you know, near unblockable again, Cover of Darkness, a great card. Interest Battlefield, which is a creature type. Creatures the chosen type have fear. We're going to be choosing, um, you guessed it, rats. So yeah, fear is usually a great way to get our creatures through. And finally, let's talk about some more proliferate effects. There's some great ones that are decently expensive. Sword of Truth and Justice, plus it was two, pro white, pro, pro blue. Deals counter to a player, get a counter on creature control, then proliferate. The you know, proliferating is huge. Contagion Engine, speaking of which, enters the battlefield to get a minus one, minus one counter on each creature, target player controls, and you can pay four and tap and proliferate, then proliferate again. That's two times, which means two poison counters for every single one of our opponents that have at least one. And then Yawgmoth, a great way to make use of our cards in our hand. Well, we can actually ta uh, pay one life, sacrifice another creature, get a minus one, minus counter up to one creature, and draw a card. So that's nice. And we can also pay black, black to discard a card to proliferate. Yeah, that can be a great finisher for a deck that is built around poison. So, yeah, I think this commander is definitely going to have some fans out there. Many fans out there are, you know, many players out there are fans already of, like, cards like Rat Colony, Relentless Rats, just Rat Tribal in general. So, I think it's going to be pretty fun for players. And, yeah, again, giving it a pretty potent effect to get with that toxic one. So, it'll be interesting to see what players do with this one. But, again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode... Take everything I've said with a grain of salt, because, again, this card I do not believe has been confirmed to be an actual spoiler, though all indications show that this is pretty much probably an actual spoiler, so, yeah, again, but still, just, just in case, okay, just a little disclaimer. Regardless, make sure you check out that link in the description below, and of course, stay tuned to this channel for your more exciting quick takes and spoilers. Again, spoiler season starts on January 17th, but, I mean... At the rate that we're going, uh, we're just going to get uh, apparently something every week. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> of course, as always, though, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.